in business analysis, risk is anything or any situation that can negatively impact your solution or your products. I know a lot of us are optimistic about the future. We hope things will go right. We plan for things to go right and then we hope that our plans come out exactly as planned. But as responsible, but responsible business analysis involves thinking of what could go wrong and making contingency plans on when they do go wrong, what you need to do. The first step in risk management is to identify, is to identify your risk. Um, so let's think about the event management industry. Now, specifically, let's think about an event planner. So let's put ourselves in the shoes of an event planner. And one of the products that the event planner has is um, wedding ceremony preparations and coordination and planning for a wedding ceremony. Now, let's think about the risk that are involved in a wedding ceremony. Um, a couple of things could go wrong. And let's remember our definition for what a risk is. A risk is anything or any situation that can negatively impact your product or your solution. So let's think about the wedding ceremony now. Um, what could go wrong? The first thing that could go wrong or one of the things that could go wrong is the couple arriving late. If the couple arrives late, then the event doesn't start till the couple arrives and that could have a multiplier effect on the other things that you need to do. The event starts late, the event ends late, vendors start working late and so many other things could go wrong just based on the couple arriving late. Another thing that could go wrong is when the vendors arrive, when the vendors arrive late. Now, Imagine the bride who's waiting for um, her makeup artist to come. Um, a critical vendor like a makeup artist arriving late will have, will have a multiplier effect on the whole program or on the whole ceremony. Um, no bride is going to come out not fully made up. All right, so critical vendors like uh, the caterer, like the event planner herself or himself, and like the makeup artist um, arriving late could have um, is a risk for a wedding ceremony. Another thing that could go wrong is having poor decoration uh, at the venue. Um, most couples want a beautiful hall for pictures and just a beautiful ambience at the wedding. So if that goes wrong, that could impact the quality of the wedding ceremony and that's a risk as well. Um, another thing that could go wrong is the quality of the food. If the food doesn't taste as great or the wine doesn't taste as great or the cake doesn't taste as great or the cake doesn't look good, uh, that could impact the quality of our solution. In this case, our solution is the wedding ceremony. Another thing that could go wrong is the weather. Uh, the weather conditions are something that you really cannot control. Uh, but having a torrential rainfall on your wedding day will definitely affect uh, the quality of the wedding. Now that we've identified our risk, uh, the next step in the process is uh, not simply to identify them without recording them and storing them somewhere. That's where the risk log comes in handy. The risk log is your repository where you save the risk that you have identified. Now, there are certain details that you must cover in your risk log. We need um, a certain level of detail, a certain level of information for it to be useful. We just don't want to identify the risk and not provide supporting information to make meaning of the risk. Now, one of the first things that you have to cover is you need to have a risk ID. Your risk ID could pretty much be anything that the company or the individual decides it could be. So it could be alphabetical, um, A, B, C, D, whatever works for you. It could be numeric as well. You could go with 001, 002, 100, 1001. Um, you have a lot of discretion when it comes to your risk ID. And your risk ID could also be alphanumeric. You know, you could go with A001, A002, Pretty much whatever works for you. The whole goal of the risk ID is to be able to identify um, that risk 
with that code um, in supporting documents and as you go on. The second level of information that you need to capture in your risk log is your risk description. You want to have a short description on what uh, the risk is about. Uh, so you could go with couple late or late couple uh, vendors late or vendors are late. You could go with poor decoration. Uh, you could go with poor quality food. You could go with heavy rainfall as short descriptions for the risk we identified uh, earlier on. Um, the third level of information that you need to capture in your risk log is your probability. Your probability are your or your probability is your are the chances of occurrence of that risk. Uh, so we want to know if it's a certainty or it's um, it has medium probability. It could be fifty percent probability, twenty percent. Pretty much, you know, how whatever the chances may be of the risk occurring is the probability that you want to capture. Another thing you want to capture is your impact. Your impact could be financial. Um, so you want to think about what the financial impact um, of the risk occurring could be on your project, on your products. So you could think about it as how much it's going to cost you to rectify that risk if it occurs or how much losses you will suffer if that risk occurs. And you could think about the impact again. You could use a, of course, for some risk, you may not have monetary terms on um, what it could cost you to rectify or what it will cost you or what you would lose if it does happen. Not all risks come in monetary terms that way. So one of the things you could do for the risk impact is to create a skill. Uh, so you could go with a scale of 1 to 10, and 1 being minimal impact on your products, and 10 being um, the highest impact on your products. You know, and at the highest impact of your products, it makes it impossible for your solution to be effective or for your product to be effective. So you could use a scale between 1 to 10 to represent your impact as well. Another level of information you need to capture is the data identified. Uh, you also need to capture your risk response. Uh, your risk response will be what you plan to do if this risk occur, or what you plan to do to prevent the risk from occurring. Uh, we'll discuss more on risk responses in a subsequent video. So stay tuned on our channel and look out for that video on our channel. The final thing you want to capture, or the final information you want to capture in your risk log is the status of the risk. Uh, so your status could be active and inactive. Your status could be open or closed. Uh, what we want, the information we seek to get from your status is to know if, to know what you're doing about it and at what stage that status is. There's a whole lot more to learn about risk and uh, we will be discussing more about um, risk analysis, risk responses in subsequent videos. So please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.